Well, good morning. Let's pray together. Lord, we lift your name on high this morning and determine that we will praise you. Lord, we will lift to you our needs and requests and we will bring before you our uh, problems and difficulties. But in all of this, we will give you our praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 55. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me and I am distraught because of what my enemy is saying, because of the threats of the wicked. For they bring down suffering on me and assail me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, that I had wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and storm. Lord, confuse the wicked, confound their words. For I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they prowl about on its walls. Malice and abuse are within it. Destructive forces are at work in the city. Threats and lies never leave its streets. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were rising against me, I could hide. But it is you, a man like myself, a companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God, as we walked about among the worshippers. Let death take my enemies by surprise. Let them go down alive to the realm of the dead, for evil finds lodging among them. As for me, I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. He rescues me unarmed from the battle waged against me, even though many oppose me. God, who is enthroned from of old, who does not change, he will hear them and humble them, because they have no fear of God. My companion attacks his friends, he violates his covenant, his talk is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are like so are more soothing than Nile, yet they are drawn swords. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. But you, God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of decay. The bloodthirsty and deceitful will not live out half of their days. But as for me, I will trust in you. The psalmist is in a terrible situation. All day long he calls out to the Lord to help him. Enemies attack him. Those who were once his friends have turned on him. He's in this terrible situation, yet he calls out to the Lord for help and has confidence that the Lord will deliver him. The Lord has delivered him in the past and the Lord will deliver him again. And so he says, um, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will redeem, and then in another place, he will redeem my soul in, pit, in peace for the battle waged against me. Many have come upon me, but God is enthroned of old. He will hear them and bring them down. Even in the midst of all this trouble, the psalmist determines that he will trust in the Lord. Let us be those, also, in times of difficulty and trouble, who determine that we will trust in the Lord. And now Deuteronomy, chapter 11 and verses 1 to 15. You shall love the Lord your God, therefore, and keep his charge, his decrees, his ordinances, and his commandments always. Remember today that it was not your children who have not known or seen the discipline of the Lord your God, but it was you who must acknowledge his greatness, his mighty hand, and his outstretched arm, his signs and deeds that he did in Egypt to Pharaoh the king of Egypt and to all his land, and what he did to the Egyptian army, to their horses and chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea flow over them as they pursued you. So the Lord destroyed them to this day. What he did to you in the wilderness until you came to this place. And what he did to Dathan and Ibram, the sons of Eb, of son of Reuben. How in the midst of all Israel the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, along with their households, their tents, and every living being in their company. It was your eyes 
that have seen the very great deed that the Lord did. Keep then this entire commandment that I am commanding you today, so that you will have strength to go in and occupy the land that you are crossing over to occupy, and so that you may live long in the land that the Lord swore to your ancestors to give to them and to their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land that you are about to enter to occupy is not like the land of Egypt which you have come from, where you sow your seed and irrigate by foot like a vegetable garden. But the land that you are crossing over to occupy is a land of hills and valleys, watered by rain from the sky, a land that the Lord your God looks after. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. If you will only heed his every commandment that I am commanding you today, loving the Lord your God and serving him with all your heart and with all your soul, then he will give you rain for your landing in season, the early rain and the later rain, and you will gather your grain, your wine, your oil, and he will give you grass in your fields for your livestock, and you will eat your fill. Here the uh, Mo Moses reminds the people that they are to love God and keep his commandments because they are the ones who have seen the work of the Lord. We are the ones who have seen the work of the Lord in our hands too. Therefore we will serve him and obey him uh, because we have seen the mighty things he has done. Acts chapter 27, 1-12 As it was decided that we were to sail to Italy. They transferred Paul and some prisoners to a centurion of the Augustine court named Julius. Embarking on the ship that uh, was about to sail to the ports along the coast, we put to sea. The next day we put in at Sidon and Julius treated Paul kindly and allowed him to go to his friends to be cared for. Putting out to sea from there, we sailed under the lee of Cyprus because the winds were against us. After we had sailed across the sea, that is of Sicilia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra in Lycia. There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship bound for Italy and put us on board. We sailed for a number of days and arrived with difficulty off Sinus, as the wind was against us, and we sailed un under the lee of Crete, sailing past it with difficulty. We came to a place called Fair Avens. Since much time had been lost and sailing was now dangerous, he, because even the feast had already passed by, Paul advised, saying, Sirs, I can see that the voyage will be danger, with a much heavy loss, not only of cargo of the ship, but also of your own lives. But the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and the owner of the ship than to what Paul said, and since the arbor was not really suitable for spending the winter, the majority was in favour of putting to sea and on chance that somehow they should reach Phoenix where they could spend the winter. It was a harbour of Crete facing southwest and northwest. Here Paul is travelling back or being taken to Rome and uh, he gives good advice. Don't sail, it's past the feast, it's dangerous to sail. But people ignore him and move on. Um, sometimes we have good advice to give and that advice is ignored. Let's see the consequences next week, next Sunday. We'll see the consequences of what happens when they ignore the advice that Paul gives. Lord, we lift up to you and pray that you will bless today, Lord, all of the preachers in churches around the world as they lay out your word before the people. Bless the hearts of the people to receive and Lord, we pray that you will stir us for works of service that we may be passionate about working for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.